everyone, the 6.5 is on the road. We are here at Cisco Partner Summit 2025 in sunny San Diego, California. It's great to be with you all. Big theme of this event, no surprise, has been artificial intelligence, AI. We know it's revolutionizing every business, every industry, and just about every person's lives in some way or shape. And I'm really excited to talk a little bit about how AI and getting your business AI ready is something that every one of these partners here, Partner Summit, should be thinking about. And I've got a great guest, not our first time on the show, and I like that a lot. I've got Liz Santoni. Liz, great to sit with you again here. Thank you for inviting me. Last time was fun, and so I was looking forward to this. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, and it felt like a little more energy this year, you know? Yeah. And I know that's one of those things you like, you don't wanna be like, oh, there wasn't last year, it was, but like, yeah. I came back and it's been really invigorating. I mean, Cisco's been on a great run. You know, I follow markets really closely. Mm -hmm. You've seen a lot of momentum, that multi-billion dollar order book for, for generative AI. But something you're really focused on is, is, you know, enabling your customers to leverage tools, leverage technology, build them what they need to continue to grow and to make events like this such a success. I'd love to start with, with you know, what you talked about today a little bit on your keynote, talk a little bit about Cisco IQ, and yeah. just kind of what you're doing, you know, leading the customer experience for all of Cisco. I love what you opened up with, because AI is, um, I know you can use a lot of cliche words like game changer, whatever, but I've been at Cisco for 25 plus years. This is the most exciting technology transition and the speed at which it's moving. And so when we were thinking about Cisco IQ, it's like how do we bring our customers along to where they're not managing their environments that need a different level of speed and agility and resilience with management and the way you manage operations from 20 years ago. And we've got to move into kind of a, a much more modernized way of uh, being able to do that. And what do I mean by that? I'll give you some really simple examples of, like reactive is not going to work anymore. Table stakes needs to be proactive and predictive and personalization. And you know, when you think about the technologies there to allow us to be able to do that. So a simple example is if I ask any one of our customers, as simple as, would you know, you know, at any point in time, do you have visibility into what's in your environment? And the answer would be no, because most of that is done manually. It's a static view. Some of the basic things that we're offering with uh, Cisco IQ is you get visibility like you've never had before into what's in your environment, your hardware, your software, even maybe your cryptographic assets as well, but it goes beyond that. It's not just a list of what's a dynamic real-time list of what's there. It actually alerts, gives you the intelligence around what are the risks associated with some of your life cycle of your, what's in your environment, for example, and actions for, okay, if it's last day of support or, you know, it is where you need to Im uh, implement security advisories, it gets down to very specific. It's that this security advisory needs to be implemented on these seven devices in this data center. So we've taken data and information and we're turning into insights to help our customers manage the environment. And to me, that is using AI for solving some very boring problems that we've been circling around for ages. That changes the way, I think even the workflows of our customers are going to be in the future. What inspired you to take this on? Because I've been around this industry probably, I don't know, you look younger than me, but long enough to know that there's been kind of this idea that, yeah, we can give you a single dashboard that shows you everything in your environment, you know, these different NMS suites that have been out there forever. But you just said it yourself. You're like, yeah, but most of these, these enterprises, these customers, they really don't know what's in their environment. They certainly don't have it at a level yet where they can see it and it's accurate and they can count on it, depend on it, make sure everything, like, was it just that you decided like, hey, we're going to take on this challenge because it just hasn't been done yet? Um, because I feel like people have tried. I feel like, why is this time different? Like, what was the inspiration here? I think it's the, it's the moment of where we are with this technology. And I think when I think about, you know, uh, the capabilities of this technology, we've just, we're just beginning to scratch the surface of it. And customer experience is like the sweet spot for Agentic. Because when you think about it is, you know, the amount of data that we have, how we support our customers, how our partners support our customers, it's very people intensive. 
So the opportunity for us to be able to take this data with generative AI, with machine learning that we've been doing for some time, and automation, we can approach the problems that we had been solving with some level of automation in a completely different way. So instead of focusing on, hey, if it's a reactive troubleshooting, how do I do it in real time? We're looking at it and going, we actually want to be able to solve issues before they even pop up. So very much a moving from reactive to, to proactive. How do we alert customers to security issues in their environment? Config issues in their environment, which most of the time they don't know until it hits them. And then it's like submarine warfare. The, it's like the, the issues and the impact of it is, is like much bigger. And by the time you've realized it, it's like there's a lot of damage that's already been done. So how do we get ahead of that? And for us, that was a big, big focus. I mean, even reducing the manual effort and the friction that my own teams and our customer teams and partner teams go through, I'll give you an example of it is, you know, we release security advisories. Those are 50 page PDFs. So think about somebody sitting and pouring through all of it. An AI agent brings context because we know those customer environments. We have data from contracts, from telemetry. That AI agent can look through that document and highlight, here are the three things that you need to address. I mean, that's, that's huge. That's reducing friction for the teams and that's really satisfying. Yeah, it sounds like a very high level of personalization. It sounds exactly. like what you used to be able to do was sort of, you know, you could peanut butter, you could smear it, like, hey, mm -hmm. here's, the, here's the patch that needs to be done and everybody gets it and then it's kind of like every person for themselves, every company for themselves. I'm going to read what's going on and go, do I have equipment that's been affected by this? You know, are we up to date on all of our patches or are we not? By the way, going back to what you said, where are, where are all these things? Like, are they available on my network? Can I do this quickly? Or do it, does this need to be distributed to different teams or MSPs around to get this? Or what you're basically saying is, oh, it can take this, it can scan the document, it can then go look across your entire IT estate and say, hey, these are the three vulnerabilities that you have. These are where the devices are. And, and I'm imagining at some point it's automation. Like, do you want us to just go ahead and proactively patch this thing? Absolutely, and that's where you give the customer control over it. Because with that visibility, you're giving them control. You're giving them the decision on whether to automate this or they want a human to take action for it. I mean, when you were mentioning this, I was thinking about the fact that, you know, um, think about security hardening guides that we send out there. It's a very vanilla, or I would say generic, like best practices guide. What we're doing is, hey, we have you know, all this context, we have all this account history of the customer, and now an AI agent personalize it for that customer. I mean, the, the speed at which we can move, the ability for us to do this to where we can deliver digital resilience, the ability for us to unleash the human brilliance in looking at other value generating capabilities or other creative things versus doing manual work that now an AI agent can take over, that is, is very satisfying for us to be able to deliver it both for, to our partners and customers. You said you've had great conversations, they're, they're reacting to this. I would imagine that this level of personalization is kind of sticky. Do you have some, I, I know you, I've seen enough of your presentation, I know you love metrics, so like as you're kind of looking at, what are the metrics that will indicate that Cisco IQ is a success. I, I know there's some soft ones that you can obviously happier mm -hmm. customers, maybe even MPS. Yeah. Like you have to have some other metrics that's going to be like more attached, more sales, more. Yeah. Like, are there things you're thinking about measuring to? to Absolutely. Okay. So, sure. From I'll, I'll start from a customer standpoint. Yeah. I think last year I saw a stat that said, 50% of a network operator's time is still spent on on manual task. Um. 70 to 80 percent of security issues are still driven by humans, for example. We are measuring, and we have stats today with customers that we've been working with, is what we're doing can help our customers slash their IT costs by between 25 to 40 percent. Uh, we can help reduce their security risk by more than half today. We can reduce their, help to reduce their compliance risk by 70 percent. So, these, every use case that we have has very quantifiable metrics 
That is what we're absolutely focused on. On the other side, what are we enabling for us and for our partners? The more premium, you know, we want to be able to sell more premium services to our customers versus basic services. And when we sell those premium services, at least now we've noticed it's a 12 point increase in net promoter score for customers who have premium services. But now this gives an, is an ability to show customers the delta between here's what your standard services are and here's what your premium services can deliver for you in terms of more automation, less manual work, more proactive, less in terms of reactive. I think these are the things that resonate with our customers and it enables our partners also to go out there with very specific metrics on how they sell the value proposition of what we're delivering through Cisco IQ. And that's just on the support side. On the professional services side, um, yesterday you, know, you saw the unified branch piece. There was a branches code out there. We're releasing a much more automated way in terms of how do you set up another branch, whether it's a one branch, 10 branch, 100, or 1,000 branches. Branches code helps us standardize and make it consistent align with a customer's design intent to begin with on how you configure these branches. And it helps us also integrate, or I would say pre-test configurations before it's deployed, reducing the risk and reducing config errors. So very quantifiable you know, kind of metrics in terms of what our customers see and what we can enable our partners to go out and sell to our customers. Yeah, it's a layer of outcomes, you know, when, they, when everything works better, happier customer, you get that exactly. net promoter boost. And of course you get those attach rates. I got to imagine attaching those premium services is going to we'll be such go a, up. I mean, premium services for us grew 90% last year. Yeah. And I expect that on, a, on that multi-billion dollar base to grow as well. Why not 100? <laughs> I'm sorry, couldn't help myself. Um, you sound like my, my parents when I came back with a grade from school going, what was it, eight? Why was it not 10 out of 10? Well, you know the, you know the rule, right? <laughs> I mean, excellence continues, continuously demands more ex excellence. And I, I'm guessing, Liz, that you're just as hard on yourself. So you, you, don't, you don't need my, my uh, critique. Um, you, you've said a few times in the passing of the conversation about like imagining or looking at like what this could do, mm -hmm. right? Because you feel like you're, I think, scratching the surface is the, is the term you used. So what does this evolve into? You must have a vision for how this, knowing a little bit about what AI can do, and of course there's a lot we, we don't know yet, mm -hmm. we'll become sentient and conscious, or, but in all <laughs> serious, like how much these agents can really take work and augment, displace, it's all the above, right? Like what do you see this all turning into over the next couple of years? Hard to tell a couple of years because okay. I still feel couple like of quarters. <laughs> I know less Maybe. about AI than I would like to, yeah. even though I'm at a point in my in my career where I feel like I'm learning every day. Yeah. I'm studying every day. And and the technology is so amazing, but I still feel like we've just started. But I can give you a couple of really concrete examples. You know, we have AI agents, AI support agents in our support uh, teams today. And uh, we have customers who have AI agents as well, and they're working in a multi-vendor environment. On our roadmap is the ability to be able to support MCP as well as agent-to-agent -agent communications as well. I can see where in the past we would look at, hey, when there's an issue, we stand up a war room, and it's usually, and it's staffed by humans today. I see in the future where the war rooms are staffed by agents. And when, you, when I think about our partners, it's agents from us, it's potentially agents from our competitors, it's their own agents. It's, it's, and, and some of the things that, you know, it, these agents would be alerted when a security assessment shows up something that triggers an issue. I can see the possibilities in terms of where it's a system of agents that are working together without a human triggering a need from a security assessment to be able to be addressed as part of a, a war room that stood up to address any issues. So, you know, that's what I can see is just around how we help our customers, not just on the proactive side, but issues that happen in, in real time that we need to, need to address. 
I see tables, I see proactive and predictive and personalization and especially hyper-personalization as becoming table stakes. With the amount of data that we have and with the system, these identic systems, that they continue to learn, the, there's the predicting part of it, there's the acting part of it. There's no reason to, to not believe that we could be able to look at every customer, whether it is they have a tiny little network or they have a massive network, and we've hyper-personalized it to where they look at it and go, we're Cisco's only customer because we know them so well. And that's what I want my team to focus on. Less time on, on the data gathering and the analytics, more time in knowing customers and getting ahead of how do we keep our customers more agile, more innovative. I'm, I'm looking at a time where probably none of my severity one cases are touched by a human and only touched by an agent. And where voice agents like our WebEx voice agents get so good that even in those cases, they would deflect to a human depending on the emotion on the other line. So that is just like thinking about the next few months. As this technology evolves, I'm sure there are other things that we can think of. We're already thinking about doing things like um, quantum assessments, like what does a PQC or post-quantum cryptography assessments look like for our customers who are in a hybrid network, your traditional networks and your quantum networks. We've just started some of those right now. I use that as an example of, you asked us that 12 months earlier, we were so busy with all of these things, we couldn't even think about that. So our opportunity for our teams to unleash, and this came from our teams, so the opportunity for our teams to unleash brilliance in looking at how we help our customers and we support our partners what I mentioned is probably 0.01% of what's possible. Yeah, you're, you're really moving to systems of intelligence and value away from kind of just systems of record and data and yep. you know, every action is optimized, right? You're basically optimizing the interaction, you're optimizing that your, your people, the people that you continue to have lead your customer uh, interfacing are able to work at those highest levels of value. And that's a lot of the promise. You know, there's always that talk, Liz, about you know, what's the downside and the augmentation and displacement more than anything. But there's a lot of upside of people spending mm -hmm. their time working on the hardest problems um, with AI. Uh, G2 and I had a, a long conversation about that earlier on this show. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked a lot about you know, every person. He talked about developers, but you know, customer augmented by AI, you should be able to solve so many more problems so much more quickly and ultimately deliver every one of your customers better outcomes. Yeah. We've got 20,000 engineers in the CX organization and to everybody the communication has been pretty clear. This is about augmentation. Yeah. This is, but it will change the workflow of everyone on the team. Right. And so that means we're going to be doing our jobs differently too. Yeah, but that's exciting and that's a, it's a bright future. Well, congratulations on all the progress with Cisco IQ. Really enjoyed having you back here on the 6.5. Look forward to sort of seeing the progress. It's amazing that this is the slowest it will ever be, Liz. The, the speed of innovation, this is as slow as you will ever experience again in the rest of your life. I can't even imagine a year, because I can think about a year ago, and it's just happening mm -hmm. so fast. But great stuff, I really appreciate you sitting down, and uh, let's do it again soon. Thank you, and thanks for having me. And I am going to use that with my team and saying, Daniel said it's the slowest in terms of innovation. I expect it to move much faster. Everything will go faster from here. You heard it here, maybe not first, maybe I've said it before, maybe someone else said it, I can't really remember, but we do appreciate you being part of the 6.5. We are the 6.5, we're on the road here at Cisco Partner Summit 2025 in San Diego. Hit that subscribe, join us for all the coverage here at the Partner Summit and of course all of the 6.5 shows. But for this episode, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs>